Now, I feel like this is one Warframe I have been sleeping on because, oh my god, does Gauss absolutely melt enemies. And here's the thing. There's a pun there. Sure, his Thermal Sunder is insanely good, but he also just melts enemies, guys. So let's have a look at both builds, be it AoE or single target, and I'll show you what I mean. As always, timestamps added beneath the video. So let's kick off things by going over his abilities, starting off with his passive. Gauss's passive is a battery in which can store up to 80% in default terms and to receive the maximum 100% you need to activate his fourth ability Redline. Now this battery is like a level gauge which rises and falls depending on what you're doing. So to simplify this here's how you can raise his battery levels. Move around as Gauss or using either of his abilities like Mac Rush or Thermal Sunder casting colds will charge up his battery. Now to lower his battery levels you can not move and it will slowly drain. Falling out of bounds or standing in nullifier cream and bubbles will also lower it. Activating your kinetic plating passively will also go and drain it and actively also lowers his gauge even further. His kinetic plating ability when activated will passively drain it and on hit it will actively lower the gauge even further. Thermal Sunder Heat Cast will also lower your battery as well. And finally, if his redline ability is under the 100% threshold, it will also go ahead and drain his passive battery. So I tried to dumb this down, but I put some text up on the screen because it may feel like a lot, but in retrospect, it's really not. Keep it simple. Gauss likes to move and be active and juggle abilities. Besides from that, it's pretty much straightforward. Gauss's first ability is Mac Rush. Now, Mac Rush, to be brief, is a sprint ability in which if you hold the ability down, you run really fast for as long as you have energy or if you come into contact with a hard surface like a wall and halt your advances. Besides from that, that's all you really need to know about that ability for now. However, for this main build that we're showing, I will be subsuming this ability off for his best friend Grendel's Nourish ability in which whenever we pick up more energy orbs, it'll be far more effective and needed because his AoE melt build will have a lot of energy spam within it. Gauss's second ability is Kinetic Plating. Gauss will encase himself with an armor plating that converts a portion of incoming kinetic damage such as physical, heat, cold, and blast into energy. Now, whilst this ability is active, he cannot be staggered nor knocked down. And this is quite important. Finally, Gauss gets damage reduction depending on the percentage of his battery passive. So overall, this ability is great for multiple different reasons. But the utility it provides alone really gives breathing room for his builds to focus on other other areas and not have to rely on mods like Prime Shore Footed, for example. Gauss's third ability is Thermal Sunder. And boy, oh boy, I will admit I have absolutely slept on this ability. Now, when tapping the ability, Gauss builds up his passive and will pulse out a big AoE around him with cold damage. Now, this adds a cold status proc to enemies it comes in contact with. And if you follow this up by casting it again with another cold tap, then it will freeze enemy solids. However, holding the ability down, Gauss will lower his passive and will pulse out heat damage instead of cold, applying heat status procs to all nearby enemies. Again, casting this subsequently more times stacks the amount of heat procs applied. So if an enemy already has one of the two elements applied to them, casting the opposite element causes a blast elemental reaction knocking down nearby enemies. With his red line ability active, all of these will receive additional benefits. Casting cold will instantly freeze enemies, only requiring one cast instead of two, and casting heat will double the amount of damage output with the heat procs. And then finally, fusing them together to go and create a blast will permanently strip away enemies' armor depending on the percentage of your battery passive. So ideally, a 100% full battery will fully armor strip enemies. So that synergy between Redline and Thermal Sunder can cause some massive damage output, but also creating great survival atmosphere due to heat stagger procs and frozen enemies. This ability is one to invest into. And then finally, we got Gauss's fourth ability, which is Redline. Redline is basically a buff to Gauss, not only activating the full power of his battery passive, but also increasing the likes of fire rate, attack speed, reload speed, and even car speed, whilst also offering bonus energy discounts for Mac Rush, stagger chances to the kinetic plating, and everything already mentioned within Thermal Sunder earlier. So yeah, it's quite a lot. Also, once Redline reaches 100% battery value, it cannot drop beneath that until the duration 
duration of the ability runs out. This ability alone is a great utility tool and one needed to reveal his true potential. Alrighty then, now what about those builds that you mentioned? Okay, so first up is the AoE Thermal Sunder build. In this build, we're going to be concentrating everything into making Thermal Sunder a destructive ability by amping up exactly what it needs. And to be quite honest with you guys, when his redline ability is active, the heat procs and blast combinations deal massive damage that even an hour in like Sedna or Void Steel Path survivals, enemies weren't standing much of a chance against this build. With that in mind, I decided to really lean into the utility side of things with my build here. But as always, everything is subjective to the user. So here's what you can do. Now, duration is an absolute must with Gauss. Too many things scale with his duration. And furthermore, once his redline ability is built up to 100%, we will get the most out of it. So duration really helps us there. This also synergized passively with the Nourish ability, which we're going to be subsuming in, which also scales very well off duration. This is why I recommend this to be modded first. Now, range is one I think you can juggle depending on what you're looking to do. For me, I wanted to cover larger areas and most tile sets that I go and approach. But due to that, I had to sacrifice a bit of damage for utility. In my opinion, though, I felt like it was worth it. And finally, strength. Now, this should be self-explanatory. It packs a hell of a punch, but honestly, I believe the utility is just too good to give up, so mod at your own discretion. Adding in Archon Vitality scales those heat procs to do a two-for-one type deal. Dipping more into heat is often a great killer. Plus, adding in the extra health into his kit with the kinetic plate in on top of it with a damage reduction gives us a little more survivability to play around with. So it just felt really good to slot this in. Archon Flow is 100% optional. The mod itself is not really that good, but if you have the remaining capacity and room to fit it in, then there's absolutely zero harm in throwing it in. Now, if you don't have the capacity, please Please go and take this out and do not make it a priority as of right now. Perhaps in the future it'll be buffed, but slot it in at your own accord. Free for Spy and Augur mods allow me to go for that new shield gate in survivability. With this build, you can cast your thermal sunder quite a fair bit. With enemies being staggered and frozen, you can also use that time to regenerate and build up your shields whilst doing so. However, if you want to go flex out the aura, you can. I just like the combination of survival here. And for the arcanes, I went with energize, or you could go steadfast, but both of them are going to help you with your energy returns. Now, as for the other, it's optional, but I slotted in the overextended mod into my build, so I wanted to redeem back my strength with more augmented. This basically gives me a free 90% range increase, and even now, no bonuses nor deficits to my strength, so lovely jubbly. Now, what about those Archon shards? All right, so I'm going to go and keep this part quite short. Please take whatever you really think suits you most, but I heavily leaned into one Tau Forged Amber Shard for cast speeds. Now, this was to increase his red line cast, and this applies before his red line actually gives you the fully built up car speed. So it was a good way to go ahead and shorten that animation and get us into that ability quicker. And finally, for the last slots, I would fit in four red crimson shards for duration. Gauss loves duration and duration loves Gauss, so it'll fit in pretty perfectly. What about that ability rotation then? Now, I think this AoE build best suits for the likes of Grinier and Corpus. Grinier can go and get their armor melted off of them with the red line stripping, and Corpus will still go down without much of a fight, except from the nullifiers. So obviously deal with those however you'd like to. And as for the infested faction, I personally found myself falling off against them due to all of their passive aura buffs. The heat procs just didn't quite have the same impact against them. Although it's viable to take the build into it, it's not really recommended. So have a little test yourself and see if you can weigh out the differences. So the main key of this build is to really make sure that whenever you can apply it, cast your Nourish ability to keep it active, even if casting it means that you have no energy remaining. Collecting energy orbs are increased whenever this ability is applied, so it's actually the most important to have up at all times. Now from there, it's a little bit situational, but let's talk about his second and then his fourth. So his second ability, Kinetic Plating, is good for a little bit of energy returns, some survival damage reduction, but more importantly, no knockdowns or staggers. So I will want this ability up, but if I'm in a safe area and I've control over it and not looking to roam far, then I will keep this ability down as a backup and cast it when I feel I need to push into packs of enemies or if a bigger enemy shows up like an acolyte. It's more of like a safety tool. And then as for his fourth ability, Redline, it is something that I will only try to cast once I've built up his passive bar to around the 80% threshold and it can't go any higher. 
from there onwards though if you was to cast it underneath it then your red line will tick the duration without you actually getting any percentage increase now this takes a little bit of awareness but i'm just letting you guys know when to cycle it otherwise it might be wasted you're losing a couple of seconds but otherwise just go ahead and pop it on whenever you want to i'm only saying this because it saves you a couple of seconds and then finally we got the thermal sandra ability and yeah guys just spam away i usually lead with the cold procs and the cold cast going to help my passive gauge meter build up and then also it's going slow and freeze enemies get control of the area then i combine that with the heat procs and the cast and yeah enemies will just get deleted they'll either be ragdolled or they'll be armor stripped and then the heat will just go and dot them to death now i will be honest this build is specifically designed for horde clearance so this is limited to what that means acolyte units or even Exodus units won't really budge as they're more of a single target focus but because redline is active within this build if you do need to get those units down this is where you're going to hybrid pull out a primary or a secondary weapon of your choice and yeah they won't be alive much longer once you hit them with all of that fire rate increases so what about that single target build all right, so build number two is more focused on ranged weapons and single targets. It's a bit of a glass cannon style with a few mods to try and help some survivability included. This build is more about that whole motto of you can't really be killed if the enemy's already dead. And honestly, it works fantastically with AOE ranged weapons that either pack a lot in the magazine or have really good fire rate in the first place. For this build in particular, we're taking out his Thermal Sunder ability and looking to bring in anything to help weapons. So these could be abilities such as energy Energized munitions, raw, eclipse, Zata's Whisper, anything like that that will pair well with what you're looking to go and get from it. Damage or utility. The main key here is once again duration as everything you apply will scale one way or another off duration besides from his first ability Mac rush but we can use that to get around pretty quick so it was worth keeping that in this is your very typical run and gun build an example of the gameplay would look something like this focusing on that damage output whilst getting around nice and quick I would probably use this build in things like exterminate or assassination missions for example it's just another type of melt that Gauss can do but that's about it for those two builds and Honestly, with the announcement of Gauss Prime around the corner, it was just about time to go look into some Gauss builds and give them a showcase of what he can do. So if you're a dummy like me and you've been sleeping on the potential of his AOE melt, then definitely take some time to re-look back into him. There are some other functions and abilities that synergize really well with him, like Roar or even Breach Surge that you can also look into. Honestly, I've been having a lot of fun with him lately. And yeah, it's not quite a fancy build, but it's one that I've been playing effortlessly and hardly paying any attention with in my books that's a good sign of a strong build doing what it needs to do Alrighty then guys i hope you enjoyed today's video thanks for watching come subscribe if you're new to the channel and support by either liking or sharing today's video but as always i'll be seeing you guys again in the next video